Hi friends, welcome to Opa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 101 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about pagination rules inside CAPI activity. So depending upon APIs, how they give the response back, depending upon that, we can implement variety of pagination rules actually. So in this video, we will be focusing about implementation of pagination rules inside copy activity when your API response gives next page URL. So firstly, I hope everyone knows already what is pagination, what is API and, every, and all right. So if you don't know, in one, in one minute I will explain. So API is something like that. Let's assume it's a program or it's a system that will take some request okay it will take a request and then it will give you back a response okay and uh, in request you can send some data or you can, you don't need to send also depending upon uh, how the api developed when it comes to response it will give back a response in json format usually okay so this is called api so for example uh, if you want to know the uh, temperature details or atmosphere details of any specific country or any specific city then you no need to put a satellite and then do an investment and then calculate the atmosphere and temperature there are some APIs already available you can hit from your program that API and get the details back the details will be given back in JSON format and you can consume so API is very generic thing everywhere it will get used so that is a high level of it so now when when i say pages what it means so let's assume if you want to make a api call and this api call is going to give you huge amount of data so in that cases usually apis they try to give that data back in pages so for example maybe 100 rows of data it is giving you back so, so apis will have a logic implemented already where you can request 10 rows each page so 10 rows in one page and then another 10 rows in second page like that so totally 10 pages it will return so that means 10 api call hits will happen and totally 100 rows of data will be given back to you so instead of one single api call giving 100 rows make 10 api calls continuously in sequence order and get all the 100 rows 10 10 10 batch by batch so that is called pagination in short okay so in book right the entire chapter will be divided into multiple pages right each page will contain some content right so when you complete all the pages the entire chapter will be over so something like that imagine like that okay so now i am going to explain you like how this pagination rules you can implement inside a copy activity so before showing the demo let me explain you the requirement let me go to browser so pay attention to it I have one demi api so if you navigate to this poke api.co website you see there is one demi dummy api here which you can use it for your testing purpose so in my example i am going to use this and i want to take this api data in pages and load it into some csv file in my data like storage i will explain you that so for example if i navigate to this api url you can see https poke api.com slash api slash v2 slash pokeman limit limit is 1 lakh and offset equals to 0 so that means this url will actually give you the entire data so you can see that entire data what it returns here so you can hit this submit button to submit this api call and see the results here so it will give every day see see for example if you see here it is like a first employee or first pokemon and this is like a two this is three so like that totally if i say control and you can see here totally 10,271 entities or rows or 10,271 uh, data elements are there in this API call. So this is like a single time API call. So if I hit this URL, this entire URL at a single shot, then you will get all the data. The same URL I have already opened here. You can see here. Okay. And you can see the entire data it returned back. So if I say control home, so let me go to control home. You can see count and it says next the next is a property which will hold the next url actually i will show you that in just a bit okay and previous and since this api is for the full data so there is null values for next and previous but if you see the results array it will give totally you can see this is like a first element from here to here first item in array name and url properties and then from here to here second element in array name and url properties like that if i do control and 
you can see totally 10,271 rows are there. Okay. So you can see here 10,271. Okay. So instead of loading this entire 10,271 rows at a single time, now what I can do is I can make this API call in pages also. Let me practically show you that. So if I go back here and here I don't append any query parameters here. So this is called query strings actually or query parameters. So let me remove this. So now let's assume this is my API call HTTPS poke api.co api v2 pokeman. So when I hit submit, you can see this is the first URL to which I made a API call. And if you see here, it returned to totally 20 items. You can see here from here to here the first item you can see here one and then you can see here two so totally 20 items it written so only 20 items it will give you back when you hit this url and not only that along with the 20 items it will give next page api url as well if you see this url closely now it says offset 20 that means exclude starting 20 uh, rows and then take next set of 20 rows limit equals to 20 so now when you do the api call from this url as a next page or a second page that means this right now whatever you are seeing this is like a first page api call then this is like a second page api call so let me copy this here and here let me go here and in the browser let me try to issue the api call for offset 20 limit 20 now if you see from 21 to when i scroll down from 21 to 40 it gives so that means 20 rows now another set of 20 rows and if you see from from so 40 right now from 41 to 60 if you want to get it then you have to take this next url here the next property url and make api call so let me take this url now let me go there and let me paste it this here and let me hit enter now if you see the result now it will give you from 41 to you can see here from 41 to 60 and it, it goes on now if i take this next url property it will give you 61 to 80 so that means in 2020 data elements in batches in pages it is giving you response back and in every response the next url is available under the next property so this is called pagination implementation okay so this api supports pagination now now how to make sure I make this API call from copy activity in Azure Data Factory or in Synapse Analytics. Then take this all the pages into one single CSV file. How to do that? When you take the all the files into single CSV file, as I said before, it will be having 10,271 rows. Okay. So let's practically implement that and see how it works. So let me go to here before explaining. Let me go to this uh, PPT. And if you see here to implement that, under copy activity pagination rules you need to use this absolute url and then you need to use this as a value because next is the property from the response which holds the next url and it holds in a body so i used it here or you can use like none here and then if you see the json json starting position will be dollar actually so dollar dot next also will give access to that element so you can use that value and why i am using here absolute url because if you see the next property value this is like a complete url of the next api call so since it is a complete full url you can use this absolute url as a property in the pagination rule for example if next property will not hold the full url if next property will hold only this information offset and limit information let's assume so in that cases there is a different way to implement that pagination that i will explain in my next video so for this video think if you are getting a complete url of the next page in the api how to make that pagination implementation so let's go to browser now and here let me try to create a new pipeline and uh, we should use a copy activity here so let's use a copy activity and then here let me minimize this here so in this copy activity what i am going to do under source i want to make the api call so let's try to create a data set of rest type rest type is to make api calls and here let me create a new linked service for my api so linked service should be created so let me hit new now i am creating a linked service and here i should use a base url base url should be your first page api url and you refer if you remember this url 
will give you the first page API. You can see from item 1 to item 20, it will give. So this is like a first page API URL and this response contains the next page API URL as well. Okay. So what I will be doing, the base URL should be first page API URL. So I taken that this will give 20 items and then th there is no need of any authentication. So anonymous and let me hit test connection to test the connection whether it is successfully able to connect to API or not. Once the text connection successful, let me hit this create button to create this linked service. And now again, let me hit OK button to create that data set. So this is good. Now this is where the main part comes. So now here under copy activity, under pagination rules, let me delete this. We no need to worry what it is. And here, if, I, if you remember, as I said, you can see here, next is a property that holds my next page URL, right? So under this, this is a full URL, right? So that means I have to use absolute URL in pagination rules. So what I will be doing here under pagination rules, I will be using here absolute URL. Okay. You can clearly see and, and absolute URL means full URL. Okay. So that's it. Don't enter anything here because we are getting full URL here. So in which case we have to enter values here that we will, I will explain in my next video. Okay. So now full URL is coming under next property. So what I will be doing here is dollar indicates the full response body and a dot indicates from this response body dot count dot next dot previous dot results like that. So I want to access this next property. So I will say dollar dot next. Okay. Or I can do one more thing also. I can select body here. Since you have selected already body, you no need to mention dollar and all. You can directly use next also here like this. So up to you. So let me use none. Let me try this dollar dot next. Okay. Then this is that's it. We are done with the source data set API pagination rules implementation part. Now I want to load this entire data into some CSV file. Let's assume. So I will be creating a new data set here for my data lake storage gen 2. So I have a data lake storage gen 2 account. Let me create it. So I want to save data in a CSV format. Let me select that. So let me say like data set output maybe. And let me try to create a new linked service for my data lake storage account. So let me select my subscription and then let me select my ADLS account. There is a ADLS Mahir Gen 2 account. And let me hit text connection to see whether I am able to successfully connect to that storage or not. And let me hit create to create this linked service. So once the linked service gets created, I am going to browse the path. So let me browse the storage under sample container, uh, maybe under output folder. I want to create a file called API data dot CSV. So let me hit OK here. So I haven't selected any file name so far and I can say first name is a first row is a header in the file and I don't want to import any JSON because there is no file right now in sync. Let me hit OK to create this and I want this file to be in a CSV format. So I am giving under sync copy activity under sync file extension is CSV. You can see right now under I am copy activity only. So let me open this data set once again, which I created for my data like storage gen 2 and I want my file name to be like API data dot CSV. Okay. This is the file name I want to give. Now let's go back to our pipeline here and let's go back to mappings. And if you see under mapping, you can define like which, which properties you want to take it as a rows into CSV file. I don't want all this count next and previous. Even this results array should come like every item as one row name column and URL column. That is what I want. So for that, what I can do here, I can import schemas here. Once I import schemas, it will come like this. But since it's a results is a array, it will be coming like this. So what you need to do firstly select here collection reference as results because I want to flatten this array. Okay. And uh, enable this advanced editor and then you can see here it, it it created the columns with the indexes here like zero zero. I don't want that. So that's the reason what I will be doing it here is delete all this first delete this completely and then see you can see collection reference is still there now import. So now when you import it will come in this way. You can see results came as an array others came as a strings and others. So I don't want count. I don't want next. I don't want previous. So under results, this name column and URL column I want. 
I want them as name and URL columns only in my CSV file. So, so far it is good. Now, let me hit this debug execute button to execute this uh, copy activity in pipeline and see whether my pagination rules are successfully implemented or not. So, let's wait for this uh, activity execution to complete here. It may take around 10 to 20 seconds usually. Okay, I have tested before. So, let's wait for this uh, execution to complete here. Okay. So my pipeline execution completed successful here. Now let's go to Azure portal and let me navigate to this ADLS Mahir Gen2 account and let me navigate to containers and here I have a container called sample container and then I saved output into output folder. You can see my API data.csv file created and let me go inside a file and if you remember it should have copied entire uh, let me go here 10,000 plus rows right 10,271 rows so let me go to my container here and uh, if I hit this edit button and then you can see let me hit this preview button I got both the columns and I think I got all the rows so if I scroll towards end I can see all the rows are copied successfully so that means using this pagination rules now I am able to make the API calls in pages and why I used this absolute URL here that is the key point that is the tricky point you need to understand okay so why I used it in short my API next property has the full URL for the next page API call that's the reason I used absolute URL there are other properties also if you if you if I if you want to see so there are other properties as well there actually let me show you that I will explain this query parameters headers end condition max request number there are other properties too I will try to explain them in future like when to use what actually okay so I hope you got an idea now how the API rules will work actually when you are making a API call and your API response has pages URL the full URL in the request body in the response body sorry so thanks for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever I add videos thank you so much